Got it. Hey there. It's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here in San Diego, California. And today we're going to talk about some of the custom gun builds that we are about to release to our customers. And we are all about the custom gun shop here. And you're going to see a lot of our pictures, both on our Instagram pages, as well as our Facebook, as well as on our website. We try to have a, a, a running uh, catalog of uh, different guns we get. Sometimes they get out of here before I get to do a video because I'm busy and they want to ship them to the customers. And usually we always get photographs and we always try to post them online and show you not only how they look, but all the pieces and parts. And that's what this video is about, too. I want to show you not only how they look but really all the pieces and parts that we incorporated and why, you know, what, what makes it a better gun. And, you know, so our goal here with the custom shop is to make the gun look better, feel better in your hand, and, of course, shoot better. And here is one really good example of that. Uh, this started life as a plain black Glock Gen 4 17 with the MOS, which is the Modular Optic System, the MOS cut out from the factory. All right, so if you look at this right in here closely, you'll see the line, and that's actually their little plate. And the plate that, that comes with the gun, there's four different plates that come with the gun, they allow you to install different red dot optics, this one being an RMR. So this is uh, actually the Trijicon RMR Dual Illumination. And this one's rather unique, in that it's not a red dot, it's an actual amber dot. So when you look through here, it is pretty darn cool. It's got a, you know, basically, not quite yellow, it's kind of amber. That's the color to describe. So, here's the gun, like I said, and we're going to talk about all the pieces and parts, but as I start to handle it, the first thing I want to do is make sure it is in fact unloaded. Now, with the Glock, is very interesting. You can always look at the Glock and see the position of the trigger and know that the hammer is down, but you don't know if it's not loaded. You don't know if there's any mag or uh, any runs in the magazine or anything like that. But bottom line is I know it's not going to go bang until the slide is ranked because the trigger is back. I can observe that. But my objective is to make sure it's totally safe. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the magazine, inspect the magazine, no rounds in the magazine, and then crack open the slide and physically look inside the chamber and see that it is in fact unloaded. See my finger off the trigger uh, right there along the side of the gun. Unloaded, now pull the trigger in a safe direction. Even though we know there's no rounds here in this magazine, no rounds in the chamber. In fact, I know there are no rounds in this room, and that's the way I like to do it. When I do these demos, I have no rounds around, so they don't have any chance to make this go bang. I still pull the trigger in a safe direction. It's a very good habit. So there you go. Just keep that in mind. You have a good habit. Keep it and always maintain it. Never point the gun at something you don't want to shoot and you won't have the accidents that would be unrecoverable. That said, let's detail this gun. So like I said, it started off as a plain black gun. You're going to notice first off, probably, this um, Starburst, what we call our Starburst Stippling Style 4. All right, And if you notice what's going on here, it emanates from the front or from the center and come, it comes out all over the whole place here. It is gorgeous. It's got some standard stippling on the back strap and a little bit more accentuation on the um, finger grooves. We've actually deepened the finger grooves to make it a little bit tighter and a little better grip because it really just marries itself to your hand. And a, a short thing about grip really quickly, uh, you know, is accuracy really starts with the grip a lot of people you know get up and they start shooting and if their hand starts to slip around a little bit on the gun you'll notice the accuracy will will you know really decrease or or get uh, less and less as they shoot more and more shots so if you look at this and you say well that's really cool there's also a reason we do it the stippling on the back the starburst very tacky on your fingers but also the deepening of these grooves when I lock into it, I am into it. I'm not, my hand's not going to go anywhere. In fact, you're going to notice it, and maybe you'll see it on this tight camera that I've got here. If I go ahead and I squeeze on this gun, I come back up, I've got the imprints of that uh, stipple job right on my fingers. I don't know if you can see that or not. But bottom line is, I, I can see it. I'm telling you that the goal of this finger deepening is to give you a better grip, to be able to shoot faster, maintaining that grip, and, of course, maintaining accuracy. The other thing we've done on the grip, which I think is really smart and, and something I do on all my Glocks now, is what we call the um, Glock knuckle cut. So as your finger comes up, 
that middle finger there, it's very notorious that anybody who shoots a Glock a lot will end up getting a, a callus right there on that piece of the finger. And that's basically Glock knuckle, they call it. What we've done is we've scalped that out, smoothed it out a little bit, so now, not only does two things. One, it eliminates that Glock knuckle <clears throat> because of the way the Glock uh, frame is shaped, but it also allows you to get your hand a little higher up on the gun, which allows you to control it better. So there's a reason we do that. Not only does it look cool, uh, but there is a reason we do that. And you can see how my finger just nestles right in there on that Glock knuckle cut we do. And again, there's that, I'll show you back in here, there's that knuckle cut. Now this other cut right here is also strategically placed, and it's called the finger or trigger finger undercut. See how what happens here? Now my other hand comes up and rests right into that spot. So now I'm locked in and there's the proper grip. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and detail the rest of what we've done to this gun. Uh, on the bottom, one of the things you're gonna see on the frame itself uh, is a Cerakote job that we've done. And, you know, Cerakote is available in many different colors. And there's some wild colors and all kinds of crazy things. But there's some colors that I think are very attractive. This is one of them. Uh, it's called Sniper Gray. And it just has a neat look to it. Not shiny. It's just a really cool, manly color. And um, what's interesting, uh, this Starburst stipple job we, do, we have done... Uh, the color kind of changes as you rotate. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but as you rotate the gun a little bit, it kind of has a, you know, a couple of different shades in there. That's just the way the light hits it. So it's really neat. Uh, you'll also notice down here on the bottom, we have a magwell. Uh, this is the uh, Dawson Ice magwell. Uh, we like these a lot. They're really cool. They're kind of uh, uh, a standard. Uh, one of the things about this that people, you know, always know, of course, you can use the magwell to load your magazines fast, right? Because you have a bigger hole. But the other thing I like about it is it drives your hand up higher on the gun. So you'll notice that my little finger is just resting right on the top of that, just on that, so it's, it, I know that I'm there. It's also, like I said, it's a great reference point to, for a consistent grip. I feel it on my palm, I feel it there. Once I know that I'm there, I, I know I've got the, the proper grip because I, I've practiced so much and I just feel that it, it's there. So that's why I like the magwells, besides the fact that it helps you load and unload. All right. Um, we've mentioned the amber dot in this RMR. I did not mention to you yet the co-witness iron sights. They're actually night sights. They're Trijicon night sights. And what you'll notice is that they stand up Oh, there's that, oh, look at that, there's that dot right there. Now, of course, it's not that big to your, net, your eye, but it is big when the camera sees it here like this. And what's fascinating, of course, is that if you did this all right, that dot sits right on top of your iron sights. Kind of just like that. But, of course, the dot's very small. This is a, uh, uh, a 7 MOA dot, <clears throat> and it's available in a couple different uh, options. So you'll notice that these um, Trijicon sights also have what we call tritium inserts, and they just glow in the dark. They're circled by white. Same thing in the front. It's a tritium insert. It'll glow in the dark with a white outline. And so the proper sight picture would be basically right there with that red dot, and, and or the, no, oh, now it's an amber dot, but it coincides or co-witnesses with the iron sights. So it's a really cool thing. You know, a lot of people think, well, it's, it's actually really good in case your battery dies, which is true, but this is a dual illumination. doesn't require battery, okay, because it's working off of uh, uh, magnified light. But also, the real trick to the co-witness is that you get it set up so your dot sits right on top of your front sight, and then it just it just seems to go faster because now you have that positive reinforcement that the dot is sitting right there. <clears throat> and if you see the dot sitting right there, then you know you're on target. So you can shoot faster because the faster you can see your front sight, the faster you can see your sight alignment, the faster you can shoot. So there's a, a physical side of actually getting it up there, but you getting your brain to actually see it 
and squeeze the trigger and respond to it and maintain that sight picture as you pull the trigger is the trick. And we do that with our pyramid trigger. So most accuracy problems are introduced by manipulation of the trigger. So the Glock trigger by itself is plastic, it's spongy, it's a very long trigger pull and a very long reset. We have our pyramid trigger, which is installed here in black on black, and it's a much shorter trigger pull, which is going to be basically right here. It has a little bit of preset, I mean a little bit of pre-travel by design, okay? But once you go ahead and shoot it, right here, here it comes, boom. The reset is right here as well. And then I can go right up back at it. So that allows me to do two things. One, manipulate the trigger faster because it's shorter and not disturb the sight picture because it's actually a lighter trigger than the, the Glock Factory. Glock Factory is about five and a half, maybe six pounds. It will wear itself into five, five and a half pounds. It comes down about a half pound with, with use. Pyramid Trigger, this one's set at about three and a half. And it'll wear itself into about three, which is a great trigger for self-defense. We can be a little bit lower, but for this gun and for a competition shooting, that's a great trigger. I mean, it's going to give you the ability to manipulate the trigger without disturbing the sight picture, which is what you want. And you want to be able to do it fast so you can shoot multiple shots rapidly without a whole long trigger stroke. So I think I've covered everything on this gun. This is uh, just about to be shipped to one of our customers. I mean, he is a lucky guy because it's beautiful. Oh, the last thing, by the way, yes, on top now, you're going to look at the, uh, the upper and you're going to think, well, that's just a black top, but it's really not. It's a Cerakote coating that we um, call the, um, let's see here, what's this? The SOCOM Blue Cerakote. So, Cerakote, yes. SOCOM Blue. So, it's SOCOM Blue on the top. All right, and we've done our, our Raptor cut on the slide uh, just to kind of dress it up a little bit. Got our serrations on the front so we can grab it here and rack the slide. Uh, the uh, SOCOM Blue is a neat color. It's not quite black, though it kind of looks like it's black, but it really marries itself well with this um, Sniper Gray Cerakote there. So, uh, last thing I, I got to tell you about is, of course, we always install and recommend our uh, tungsten guide rod. And uh, I've got that uh, on this Gen 4 gun. Uh, the tungsten guide rod is significantly heavier than the plastic guide rod that comes with the gun. It helps reduce recoil and muzzle flip for all the Glocks. I mean, this is, you know, this standard play for us. It, it's it really a huge difference. It's one of the most um, uh, noticeable things you can do to your gun that will improve your shooting and also uh, just make it feel better because it has a little bit more balance to it, a little bit more weight, doesn't snap around so much. Uh, that is the, the tungsten guide rod available for Gen 3, Gen 4, and Gen 5 guns. So. Like I said, we're about to ship this off to one of our customers. I've got UPS picking up here in about a half hour, so I've got a couple more guns to go through. I thank you for watching. If you're ever in San Diego, certainly come on down and see us. You can see some of the custom guns. You can shoot some of the custom guns in our shooting ranges here at San, in San Diego. You can rent these little guys and, and go out and test them out. And, of course, you can also start a custom build and pick pieces and parts and, and look at some pictures and say, yeah, I like that, I like that, I like that, and get your own custom gun that you can have and you can call your own, and uh, we'd be happy to help you created. I'm Lenny McGill. This is the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop. Hope to see you down here sometime. Thanks for watching.